So I'll be talk, trying to take you through what the diagnosis and staging as far as breast cancer is concerned in our country. So just to bring, to bring you to the magnitude of the problem, so breast cancer is the number one cancer. It's overtaken cervical cancer in our country, and the incidence as of now is 1.5 lakh new cases a year. The trouble is that we still continue to diagnose breast cancer in advanced stages, and it, almost 60 to 70 percent of our patients still do come in advanced stages. But from our vantage point, in the sense, because we work in corporate setups, we probably mimic uh, the kind of uh, stage that you see in the West, but not so many uh, stage ones. A lot of stage twos is what we see. Uh, so the five-year age standardized survival for breast cancer in India is close to 52%, which is kind of quite low, and it ranges between 31 to 54%. And we do know that there is poor access to standard care. So standard care is the operational word, really. So if you come to diagnosis, so diagnosis, I would uh, think, you know, we need to talk about imaging. We need to talk about how we make a pathological diagnosis. So if you look at mammogram, there is a lot of indiscriminate use. Whichever investigation you put in our country, it is likely to be misused more than, uh, you know, being used correctly. So when you couple it with opportunistic, opportunistic screening, because invariably, um, these ladies would walk into a gynecologist clinic and there it is likely that even a 25 year old would undergo a mammogram. So this indiscriminate use, that is what I mean by indiscriminate use, a 25 year old would be getting a mammogram but a 55 year old would not be getting a mammogram. You know, so that is the kind of uh, variation that you would see. And the cost is ranges from say rupees 500 in a very small setup which may just have imaging and not a hospital setup to even 3,000 rupees in corporate setups. And if you have a talk of a digital mammogram, it could even go up to 5,000 to 8,000 rupees, although it's closer to 5,000 now because of a wider use of full field uh, digital mammogram in the bigger setups. So ultrasound breast is commonly used. This is also used by our um, gynecologist colleagues because we do understand, unlike in the West, most of our patients would have been to their gynecologist. And that is where the first contact is. And then we come to MR mammogram. MR mammogram, again, varies between rupees 7,000 to 14,000 rupees. But this is used in larger centers. Again, in larger centers, there is a tendency to indiscriminate use um, of MR mammograms. So if you talk of tissue diagnosis, FNAC is something that is often performed. Lots of times, even before imaging, especially in smaller towns, you would find that the moment somebody sees a lump, the first investigation that is done is a fine needle aspiration cytology. But the sensitivity is very variable because the person who reads or the person who conducts the FNAC is a very important uh, uh, cog in the wheel. So sensitivity ranges between 30 to 80 percent and the cost, of course, it's a very, uh, you know, good, uh, it's an effective method if you talk in terms of cost and varies again between rupees 200 to 1500 in bigger setups. Core biopsy, again, blind sensitivity is closer to a 70%. And the cost would vary uh, for histopathology could vary between 500 and 3000 rupees. And if you look at the markers that need to be done, ER, PR, HER2, would range between 1500 and 7000. The same if it is done under ultrasound guidance goes up significantly, it's almost twice over because of the ultrasound procedure cost and uh, so they're on, uh, it, although the sensitivity is brilliant because it's close to 90-95%. And the, one of those things which is done very frequently in our country again is excision biopsy, which I would not condemn very much. I would rather have a diagnosis than, you know, have a patient sent home, uh, you know, that, that you don't have anything, you know, it's, it's something to do with your milk gland and some, some you know, such uh, conversation that happens between the gynecologist and the patient wherein you miss a possible opportunity to diagnose. So there, if somebody were to do an excision biopsy, I'm happier because then you have a diagnosis and you know what to do next. So this is an Indian study where, you know, FNAC was compared with a core needle biopsy, but this was done in a medical college in Kolkata. There they were able to show that, yes, you know, the sen uh, sensitivity is not that great as compared to a core needle biopsy. But the specificity is uh, very good, about 100%. So now ASCO has, you know, since the time the Choosing Wisely started in 2012, there have been several versions of how uh, things stand as far as staging of disease is concerned. 
So if you look at breast cancer, the use of imaging for uh, staging in early breast cancer ranges between 15 to 88 percent. And advanced imaging and tumor marker assessments have been documented in 28 to 71 percent. Once something becomes a habit, I know it's so difficult to get rid of it. I know of the CA 15.3s. Every time I see them, I said, why the hell, you know? And there are a lot of laboratories which have these packages that are given to women for, it's done as a screening, uh, screening investigation, which is even worse. You'll find a CEA on it, you will find a CA 15.3 on it, and nobody's able to tell the patient what it means. The only place where I would think a CA 15.3 would be of use is if the patient has extensive skeletal metastasis and you want to see how she's responding to treatment. And the staging investigations in India is actually quite, you know, you, you would think it, it's, it's really strange, but, and it's extremely variable. You would be doing PET CT in early stage breast cancer, and there would be instances where would be, you would be seeing patients in your uh, outpatients who's had surgery done for breast cancer, has, has not been staged at all, and she was locally advanced breast cancer to start off with, and there is no staging in advanced disease. So that is the range that you're likely to see in our country, and that is what has to change. So this was uh, the start point for ASCO in, the, in 2012. If you look at the uh, breast cancer bits, the ones that they said was do not use PET CT and bone scans in the staging of early breast cancer. But I can assure you, each one of us uh, in this hospital is guilty of this, of doing bone scans in stage ones also, and PET CT. I will come to the reasons why it happens, but a, but blood test for biomarkers, I think it's high time we delegate it to the uh, to the hi to history and don't uh, do it at all so so clinicians are not choosing wisely for breast imaging we know pet ct is a bone of contention but then there is this thought in the pa in the physician's mind i would say that patients with more aggressive cancers irrespective of the stage um, need to undergo a pet ct so if it's a triple negative breast cancer or it's a high grade, you feel um, lymph node, you would invariably go ahead and do a PET CT. So there is a perception. This is perceptional, but perception can be changed only with evidence, and uh, that is, I'm sure, uh, work in progress. And a lot of physicians, not just in our country, but abroad also, don't believe in these guidelines. And then it is patient-driven. If a patient comes to my outpatient and says, you know, there is something called a PET CT, you know, I would want to get it done, so I would succumb to that uh, that uh, particular patient-driven um, uh, thing because of fear of malpractice litigation. Because what it, it may happen far and few that you would do a PET CT, you would not find anything most of the times, but sometimes you do find a rare ovarian mass along with it or a rectal cancer, a coincidental thing which may happen. But uh, the fear of malpractice litigation does get to uh, a lot of physicians. So there are uh, choosing wisely recommendations for routine workups. So let's, uh, the thing that we are driving to and something that we have to uh, make a habit of is to not perform PET CT and radionuclide bone scans in st staging of early breast cancer. And what has been seen is even in, st in, in stage 2B, you do find about 10 to 20 percent of patients uh, doing this. And do not routinely order breast MRI again. Um, it, in a resource poor situation, no, but in, a, in an organization like ours where you would want to do more breast conservation surgeries in younger women, maybe it would be of help, but it has been shown that even if you don't do an MRI, it does not impact the final outcome. And of course, tumor gene testing, again, you know, there, is, uh, there are a lot of gene assays around and uh, in our uh, centers, we do land up doing gene assays like Oncotype DX or the Endopredict. These are very expensive investigations. Um, but you have these discerning pop this, uh, the discerning population which says, is there any way I can escape chemotherapy? And if you don't offer it, it is possible that they would go back and Google and find it and then you know you have to actually land up offering it. But as a routine, no, because even in the West, uh, doing routine gene assays has not been proven of value. Uh, this is treatment related, but of course, axillary staging is also part of the whole thing. Sentinel node biopsy over the age of 70 years with hormone receptor positive patients and clinically node negative should 
preferably be avoided. I remember when I was in the UK in 2003-2004, we used to not do axillary surgery over the age of 70 in a clinically node negative situation. So here they're saying that stay away from sentinel node biopsy also in patients over the age of uh, um, 70. So these are the things with diagnosis and staging. And if you ask for recommendations for India, I think we don't just have to think about what is the best suited investigation. We also have to talk about how to educate the people who are offering this advice. So this is also very important because we have a lot of leaks. It is not as if a patient with a lump in the breast will directly walk into an oncologist clinic. There are various routes from where they can come. So we have to plug all those uh, loops, uh, loopholes. Thank you.